the the nightlife, the the low riders, the you know the style, the the way we talk, the way we act, like it's right here on the east side. We begin with breaking news here at four o'clock. Mandatory evacuations in place for at least what a isn't thousand normal, people. especially here in Los Angeles, is this blue LA has an epidemic homeless people right now. So you guys are just used to smog, crazy homeless, and fires. It's a little big style. Man, I used to be writing and be like, where is this shit coming from? Okay. And it's the worst shit I ever heard. Suck my dick a hundred times. These these kids and their hip hop, that's not music. You're supposed to play the trumpet like Dizzy Gillespie and go. <laughs> I smell weed. Uh, what'd you say? <laughs> Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. Today I'm with a very special guest. Hey. The one and only Noah James. What's up, man? How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Finally got around to doing this. Yes. We here. <laughs> LA is crazy. Hey, you know, it's, it's lit out here, man. Yes. It's, you know, but... Lit to me mean leaders in training. Wow. So we lit. When I was doing like some research on you, I thought it was it was exciting for me to see that we actually know some of the same people. Mm. Like um, I've interviewed Raz Kaz and Dell, and you've opened for both of them. Those are the OGs, man. Yeah. Those are the OGs. And I also saw you open up for DMX like once or twice. Oh man, that's that's insane. That's my love language. <laughs> <laughs> DMX, that's the dude, man. What was it like for you when you found out that he passed? I cried. Hmm. My mama texted me one of his prayers oh, shit. that day without knowing that he died. Wow. And I'm in I'm in uh, Superior, Arizona when he passed. Hmm. And I'm in a room. And I don't think I'm about to cry. Because like Michael Jackson, I cried. Prince, I cried. Selena, I cried. I was in the hmm. fourth grade. And like this, I cry. Like you know, this even now, like thinking about this dude. This dude was he was he he grew up like I grew up. I was a check kid. I was left at group homes and shit like that. I it was the same stick. Like he didn't have mother or father. I usually you have mom. Mm-hmm. Usually, like ninety percent of the time, you gonna have mom in this society. But X didn't have his mom or dad. Yeah, granny. I didn't have my mom or dad. I had my granny. And my granny just passed in February. Wow. So it's kind of like, like you know, that song Slipping and Falling, he's talking to his grandma. Mm. So it's kind of like, yeah. And you have a project named like, after your grandma, right? Yeah. <clears throat> granny said. Wow. Yeah, so X, yeah. Do you think it comes down to like when someone like X, it comes down to the people he's like associating himself with? Because supposedly might have been drug influenced or... Man, I think that is just... Uh, it's it's environment, right? It's environment, then it's traumas. And there's traumas that you you're not dealing with. Drugs be there. Yeah. Drugs even when you stop, drugs catch up. My mom did twenty five years in prison and she was on crack all her life. She's off crack now. She actually drive buses and trucks for like Netflix. Brad That's Pitt it. is in a she's yeah. showing Brad Pitt my music. Oh, like wow. she's that mom right now. She like She's doing real good for herself, trying to open up uh, uh, Miss Phil's cookies. Ooh. You know what I mean? So my mom is doing real good, but she had she understands she still had this residue hmm. that she's trying to kick out, that the drugs still have an effect, and the trauma, and the when it happened, how it happened. So even X being, say X been clean for 10 years. Yeah. People hear him talk and still think he's on drugs, but not nah, it just, it's him just trying to get it out and... He had a son. I actually follow his son's page. The Ooh. son's not even one. It's a baby's page. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's his baby's page. And you, this is what he's been doing. For the last five, six years, it's been with his kids. Hmm. That's it. I've been obsessed with Nirvana lately. Oh, man. <laughs> nah, dude. Nah. Because I'm very late to the bandwagon, even though I shouldn't be because I'm nah, from nah, Seattle. But nah, you good. It's, it's crazy to see like how drugs can ruin someone's life, even if they have kids, even. You know what's crazy? You gotta. Uh, everyone have this addiction, right? Say even someone that's suicidal. You know, even my past, I learned just to love people. Like, 
it ruined. <clears throat> it, 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 it it's crazy. It's, this is a crazy perspective. It ruined them and created them. True. You know, it's crazy. It's like, it's like that phoenix type of thing, like the fire kill, you rise from the ashes. The, mm-hmm. the bird actually burns and go through the pain of burning. Don't think it's just a magical. No, the the, wow. the bird goes through pain of burning. I never thought of that. You understand? <laughs> like people forget that like, it's not this magic. Like it magically appears and Harry Potter burns. Nah, bro, this bird is burning from inside out. Organs, heart, brain burst. Everything scorching. Jesus. Then it rises again. So imagine that's how painful that 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 analogy is. The analogy is that fucking painful. Like it's not this is 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 loving is but it's painful. So when I look at Amy Winehouse or um, Juice World or these cats, it's Mac Miller. Mac and Mac was that thing about Mac. It was an accident. Mac was just trying to take a little bump to get away. Oh, you can't blame Mac. He's just in Hollywood doing his thing, probably making music. He want to stay up all night. Anna Raw ain't going to do it. Mac just want to take a little bump and some bitch-ass motherfucker put fentanyl in that motherfucker. Yeah. That's your environment now. Everyone that was in that house got to get fucked up. Somebody got to get fucked up. Somebody got to get... That's... So, it's like, you know, drugs made me at a point in time, but my drugs always been, like, hallucinogenic and... Nothing crazy like right. shrooms, acid, you know, aren't peyote. Those be, aren't those being worked on being like legalized? And um, DC legalized them. Lone Beach is about to legalize them. Denver just legalized them. Legalize or decriminalize? Is it decriminalized? There's a difference. It is, but shit to us, the same <laughs> thing. We ain't gonna get in trouble for it? Okay, cool. We're gonna do everything with it. Well, wow. that's how man. We that's how I looked at a lot of shit. Like, oh, we just not long. We ain't gonna get crazy trouble. I can get away with a ticket and whatever. Well, wow. plead. I might plead not guilty because the cop ain't gonna show. Take that off camera. But <laughs> is that a real thing? The yeah, cop not got, showing thing. Yeah, all the time. I'm, all the time. I have not gotten a ticket. Every time I got a ticket and I go to court and I plead not guilty, all the time. Probably like fifteen times. What? Cops don't show, I don't get the ticket. That, I don't think that's in Washington, then at least, because that's not in Washington. I've Is been to, I've been to court for tickets and the cop wasn't there, and I still. But did got, you but did you plead not guilty though? Maybe I didn't do that. Yeah, you got you got to take that risk. You got to take the risk of pleading not guilty because he might show up. Ticket might he might show up, but they just gave me two options to pay or. Um, Dismiss it or whatever. Well, they don't give you the. Nah, I don't get another option. So, like, Mr. Wilson, you got a ticket, not guilty. Before they even finish it, not guilty. But you've heard them ask if you're guilty or not <clears throat> nah, guilty. Nah, I don't care. Nah, I don't even wait. Not guilty. I know that much. <laughs> not Damn. guilty. I need more friends with tickets, then. <laughs> yeah, you got to get people like me that been through it, and I can kind of help you out. You know, yeah. a little bit. Just you know, like especially if you say you get like say in IE, we got um, we got Colton, then we got like the place called Rialto. Colton and Rialto sometimes they use San Bernardino police. Okay. Right to where, if you get a ticket over there, they're you gotta not go, driving. Yeah, okay. they're not driving. They're not doing that. I know cops. Wow. They ain't getting up. They're not getting that enough from me. Wow. Cause they think in me, I just play the game. I play the game. Why do they have to show up though? I would, I would guess for anything. Like <sighs> you gave me the ticket. Like Fuck. you know, tell me why he's not, why he's guilty. Like my shit been like a seatbelt or you know, nothing like speeding and. How do people get pulled over a seatbelt? Like you have to be speeding as well or something. Me right? and this me being big too, because sometimes the seatbelt don't work for my big ass. But they see that. They see that, what right? The fuck? And I would lean back. I lean back, right? And I poke my stomach out, and I'd be like, "Look, cop, the seatbelt actually do work for me. I just don't put it on." And I'd be like, "It doesn't work, man. Like, Yo, go get you a double. Go get you the double thing that put in an airplane." I like. And I, I play a little dumb. I'm like, "What? They got those?" <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna go get one. I go get one. And they're like, all right, man, you have a good day. I'm like, you have a good day too, man. I'm like, peace out. Wow. That's it. Right. I have to. I'm. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm. Yeah. I'm like paranoid about getting another ticket. Cause I got three 
in the span of two months, which is a lot for me. I don't know compared to other people, but congratulations, I had, man! That's like you American now. That's real American. <laughs> That's real America right now. But now I always have the like Google Maps wherever I'm going because it shows where there's police have been. Yeah. So even if there's not an actual police person, I I wait till the emoji or whatever on the maps disappears, and then I can speed up again. Like I'm very paranoid about. That's good. That would be a little paranoid. But it sucks. I know it's all right. <sighs> All right, man. Like, even in the climate of what's going on right now, I say you as a young black man, listen, play to their egos. Mm. That's it. That's it, bro. Like, for real, for real, like, real talk. Mm. Real talk. Say nothing. Just listen to they talk. And when you see an open to respond of connection, it's crazy to think like this. It's crazy. But in these times, like, one dude... Uh, Pulled up, me and Lisa leaving Del Taco lights off. We got weed in the car. It smelled like weed. Uh-oh. All crazy shit. Police. Put us over. You know, right? Put us over. Said, we got weed in the car. I said, yes. I got weed in the car. <laughs> I explained why. I'm diabetic and all of this and all of, you know, what's going on. I love my granny. I can talk about my granny all day. The police said something about his grandmother. Then I said something about my grandmother. No then way. we connected. No. Wow. Then he told me, this is like a long time ago. Then he's like, yo, he like, you know what you need to do? He's going to get your medical card. It's a place right down the street. He told me where to go get my medical card. It's just a white guy too? White, whitest of guys. Wow. And the thing is, is calmness. Mm. I'm calm. Because I know how f- bad it can fucking get. My ribs been broken by police. I've been kicked in the face by police. My jaw been broken by police. I've been black. I've been all that. But that's... When I was young, and I'm a fucking rattlesnake. Jesus. Now I'm an orca. I'm very calm. I'm the predator of the sea. Are they calm, though? Like, I've seen... Yeah, they calm. You know what it is? The thing is, when they approach, even when they're not calm, I'm calm. It's judo now. It's... it's they see my energy, you know? I'm. It's easy. It's... I don't know... I mean, in the most hostile. The most hostile... And I'm six foot two, four hundred pounds. I look like the threat. <laughs> I'm I'm the threat. But my energy, even when they approach me with a hand on a gun or they gun it even out, I'm nonchalant. I'm I, I my my where I come from is it's worse. This ain't nothing. This ain't to me, the cops becomes nothing to where my environment have been worse. You know what I mean? Where is so it's calmness, man. I think sports, but I think all the all the shrooms and the lucidity. <laughs> do you think that actually works though? Like yeah. I, I think they can be fun, but do you think that actually like it changes to, people? It, yeah. It, well, I, well, like my, make people nicer. Like they have an experience that yes. truly changes them. Bro, if you knew me before now, sheesh, I was a monster. I had hate. My mom did 25 years of prison. My dad got deported to Hades. I'm bouncing out. I'm in group home seeing little girls get raped and touched. Jesus. And I'm trying to... I'm still trying to be something. I'm still trying to help. I'm still trying to help myself. I'm still trying not to get kicked out. I'm still trying to make sure that my little brother don't go to the system or my cousin go to the system or my little cousin don't get raped or all of these things. My my viciousness was valid. Hmm. My darkness was valid. But were you like mean to random people? Or had no, it was just people, just situation, not to okay. randoms. See, I wasn't that point to where cause I knew what that was. I felt being mean to random, I'm doing what everyone's doing. So I was aware of that very, like, 11. Wow. I was so aware of that already. But I just, I'm I was vicious. I would... I would do heinous shit to people. You know what I mean? I would just, and ego death, right? From psychedelics? From psychedelics. Okay. 11 grams of shrooms. Oh my God. Right? Okay. And ego death is just, death is a transcendent. It's trans, right? That with the death, the people think you're killing your ego. No, your ego's transcending to the person who you really want to be. Hmm. And who I really want to be is the most loving person. I want to be joy. I want to be sunshine. I want to be love. But it's hard to love where there's no love around you. 
So Eagle Death helped help me escape the fear of being the only loving person in my proximity. Hmm. So within all the darkness, I just illuminated myself. But some people try to brag about it and say they're better than others because they've done psychedelics. Nah, that's stupid. Like, I don't get that. It's... Is that that's, mean, that's people who never done it to me. To me, who, who you haven't really done it. Wow. You haven't really, really done it. If you bragging, I got Viva nodding his head. Yeah, cause, time. Cause, <laughs> cause, this is my brother. And we on the same thing. Like, man, this is Mr. Peyote right here, yes. man. This is a dude right here, man. So we understand that if you really, really done these things, or really they done you, oh, right? It's you get this, man. You just get Tattoos? goosebumps. Nah, oh. you see this? <laughs> this is love. This wow. is me opening up everything right now. Damn. And this is me just turning it on myself. Then I just let it die down, let it digress. You know what I mean? Like, but that's, you got to love it like that. You got to be able to be like, oh, man, I want love in my life. I want love. Then you go, okay, I'm going to turn it back on. What the hell? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let it digress. That's me opening up my happiness willingly at any time. I'm in control of it. <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? Like, that's it. I let it go down and I do the same thing. Like, I'm love, man. I love love. I love everyone. Let me turn it back on. That is again. That's very interesting. You know what I mean? I don't think people believe in it sometimes. But once <laughs> you believe in it, like anything else. Wow. It becomes real. Do you believe in a lot of things like ghosts? And... I believe I'm Haitian, man. <laughs> okay, Listen, like voodoo. Yeah, voodoo and voodoo just it depends. It depends on who's doing the magic. Okay. If you dark, the magic's dark. Okay. If you light, it's just, if it's Star Wars, man, it's the color of your lightsaber, man. Or Wizard of Oz, maybe. Even. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's magic is real in a sense. Like a curse is real, mm. right? Like Lil B cursing James Harden. Uh. Remember that. You know why James? You know why the curse is real? Cause Cause, Haitian? Nah, cause no. Lil B said it right. So every day, James Harden wake up to hundred thousands of people telling him that he would never win a championship. You know how what type of mama mentality you have to have to millions of people keep on telling you you're not going to get one. You haven't gotten one. You're actually one of the best players in the NBA, but. Even having some of the best people on your team. But you still can't get. And it's a little thing where he stopped doing a cooking dance. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He did apologize to Lil B because he don't want to be cursing no more. Lil B lifted the curse. <laughs> Lil B <laughs> lifted the curse, man. Energy. The magic is the energy. That's all it is. The magic is the energy. The only way the the... The magic can activate is the last portion, is the energy. Is the last portion. It's, it's like Dr. Franken, Frankenstein. He found all the components to create Frankenstein, but he needed God's lightning at the end to awake him True. on that certain day. That God's lightning, not just lightning, God's lightning, that big boat. He needed that. He needed the energy wow. to bring him to life. Could he find all the minerals to actually create a human? But he needed that one thing to give him spirit. Wow. Energy. That's why it's, when it comes to psychedelics, when it comes to psilocybin, uh, psilocybin, it's, that's what it is. You have a bad trip because you're thinking about the bad trip. You're mm -hmm. around bad energy. You're not in a place where you need to be to experience this the way you need to. Have you ever done it at a party then? Or yeah, a party. Football game. Like, While you're doing football? Yeah. yeah I've got Cajona High School in San Bernardino. Like, tss, four grams? During a game? During a game. Jeez. I'm in my mind. <laughs> I'm in my mind. I don't know who's driving, but he's driving good. He's driving good. He's driving like Martin Lawrence and uh, Bad Boy. <laughs> he's driving good. But isn't that a thing where you should wait till you're older to do psychedelics? Shit, if you... If I'm if I'm 11 years old and I'm aware Wait, of Wait, did you do it at 11? I did it like 15, but say but I'm saying if I'm 11, I 11 I'm already smoking weed. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm already exposed to what kids are not exposed to. 
I'm already understanding what rape is. I'm already understanding what bullying is. You know, still don't know what self-love is or self-worth, but I know all these other negative shit already. By the time you hit 15, you're a grown-ass man, like, damagedly, <laughs> like, traumatized. You, you already went through some adult shit. So I needed I needed that. You know, by the time I... By the time I'm 19, I'm fully aware. You know, I'm taking accountability. I'm being responsible. You know, this is me and my girl been together for 17 years. Damn. You know what I mean? This is me being aware of being a man and being understanding. Understanding and all this, all this shit. And, and I, I can say it's from hallucinogens and putting myself around people I needed to be. Like, the people that they thought was lame and corny, be around them. I had a friend named Fame Kills. He the one that, he was chess team, little dude. People thought he was a nerd. My best friend in high school. He the one that made me be in a chess club. Are you good at chess still? Kind of nice. Kind of. Out to play I, later. You know, then. I'm kind of, I'm there. I'm there. I haven't played in a while, but since high school, that's what my thing. I'm on a football team. I'm rapping, I'm doing other activities, I'm on the chess team. We couldn't join, I was trying to, get, I was trying to do a play. My bro, Fame Kills, like, you can just make your own glee. So all the rapper homies made their own glee. So I was around people wow. that a lot of other people thought they was lame and corny, but they're teaching me how to be independent from a suggestion. Because I'm not thinking you can rent out the auditorium. I'm not thinking you can make your own group. Hmm. I'm not thinking you can be on the football team be this type of person to be on the chess team and be okay. It's like all of these things you think as a kid you can't be because everyone this. And I, I just was around people that was everything who they wanted to be. Especially when I, I really paid attention to people who they call corny and lame. Because all the corny and lame people always had some type of independence. They always had some type of shit that, and people who call them that are, was jealous or wish they was in that position and here come me um understanding that in mm. high school like oh all right these are people i need to be around wow these are people i need to talk to and these are the people that tell me hey uh stop sitting in the back of the class stop pretending you're dumb my homie told me that huh. stop pretending you're dumb sit in the front oh, i'm telling your granny <laughs> like these are like you know and these are like th that gave me joy for people to be like that. So it's like, I don't know, man. It's shrooms, baby. Tell shrooms. me about your uh, your fascination with WWE. Everything. I don't <laughs> know, man. So I got a tattoo that just say, we want tables. Wow. You know, shout out to Delhi Brothers. Like, I got a Dragon Ball <laughs> Z tattoo. It's a, it's a five-star Dragon Ball. Then it says Frog Splash. Because hmm. that's RVD's uh, uh, move. It's a five-star Frog Splash. And I like, yeah, it's um, everything about wrestling. Wrestling was, you know, I first watched wrestling on Telemundo. It was in WWE. Oh, yeah. So first was on Telemundo, and I started understanding what luchador is and the the the, the legacy behind the mask, the, the culture behind the mask, the culture behind the, that wrestling culture. Then I followed, and I started getting into WWE, WCW, ECW, uh, New Japan, like, I don't know, wrestling was, the Keep It 100, man, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like soaps in Disney, but with live action. Like, just imagine that, because Rock is a great actor. Yeah. He can kind of sing, you know what I mean? He can wrestle, so it's all of the, it's like all, what Justin Timberlake have to be in, in Disney, but imagine he had to be an action hero at the same time. Wow. And sell it live. So wrestling was like everything, like Undertaker, like the I don't know the music, the the fans, the plots, the I don't know the the sayings that at, like Ric Flair how he talked, how the promo is like yeah brother <laughs> fire like, and all that all of that <laughs> like we're gonna get you all the way down low game you know like all the, the promo was so crazy I just loved it and the older I got. It kind of became, I started understanding the business of it too, mm -hmm. like marketing. 
promotion. Did that take it away from you? Like, nah, you it, it made me love it even more. It made me go like, damn, you got to do it. To be a wrestler and be in wrestling business, you got to do everything. Mm -hmm. It's everything. It's literally sports entertainment, right? So it's everything that a TV show or a movie got to do. Everything a TV show the movie got to do, wrestling got to do it on top of a fucking live show. Mm. Everything. Then it made me understand, like, mankind came up with his own character. So he owns it. So now here come, I'm learning independence through reading wrestling books, right. reading Eric Bischoff book, reading a Mick Foley book. Like, oh, y'all came up with these characters. Now, y'all actually own the name of it. Vince don't. You know what I mean? They own Undertaker name. Hmm. That's why they keep on a ticket because they own his name. They can milk his name, but they don't own The Rock. Rock actually just bought his name, got his name back. Oh. So they don't own The Rock. Stone Cold own a piece of his name, but they don't own, they don't own Mankind. They don't own none of his names. It's like owning your masters. Yes, like it's owning your masters. Wow. So all the merch, all of that, they get the chunk of it. They get a big piece of it. Wow. So now here come me being an independent artist, being an entrepreneur, and the thing that I love the most have taught me everything to help me in this business. Wow. Like promotion, marketing, anticipation. Some things are raw. Some things are SmackDown. Some things are Sunday Night Heat. And some things are pay-per-view. Hmm. So figure out how to put your investment or your each entities, you know, to where Raw Monday is a build-up. SmackDown Thursday is another build up. Now you got your pay per view. Everything you got from these two things, I need to put it in the pay per view. So it was like wrestling kind of taught me all of that. Like, you know. What about your uh, WWE album you released? That was pretty dope. Oh, Orcamania, man. Orcamania. Yeah, Orcamania. Same thing, man. Like, I, I was testing out my voiceover shit. That like, was so funny. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm kind of testing out my voiceover. Perfect and, length, too. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? It's nice. <laughs> you know, I got the remix coming out. I got another project. I got a, uh, a project called Powerbomb James. Ooh. So it's me uh, as a wrestler rapping wrestling matches. Oh, and he faces, like, everything negative. Like, there's a group called the Negative Society. And self-doubt is in there. So it's all these okay. this yeah. different wrestling faction that all this shit, we struggle mentally. And Powerbomb James, I always go through them. Wow. Sometimes he wins, sometimes he get jumped. Wow. You know, so that project led to that. Like, all right, I have a new character now, Power Powerbomb James. Wow. You know, Lisa's my manager. It's BTYF Wrestling. You know, whoever produced it, that's the name of the belt or the name of the production. So it's like, wow. I don't know, man. It's Damn. it's a whole thing. You know, it's. I glad I glad I found it. You know what I mean. As a kid, cause it kept me out of trouble and it kept my imagination like wow. going, wow. like to this day. You had a busy twenty twenty. You released like three different projects. I did, man. I don't know why, but I did. <laughs> and wasn't you weren't thinking about touring? I'm guessing during that time, you just felt <sighs> like you needed to release things. Yeah, man. I I, I think my first project, my first love is never hidden. I was ready to quit music because pandemic hit. Mm. Me and me and Vivian Mescal ready to hit a tour. We're planning, planning, we're planning. We're ready. We're ready to go. All like plan, let's go. That shit hit, and I'm like, fuck, like you know. And I'm ready to drop all this music, and the touring was gonna be perfect with it. everything gonna be perfect. And it made me like not even quit music, but put it on the back burner so I can go focus on something else and do something like that. But then I just stuck to my plan. I stick to my plan and did the other shit. So I just stuck to my plan, so I just won't be sitting on this music mm. you know i'm not gonna be sitting on 48 tracks crazy <laughs> fuck i i could mess with your head yeah i ain't gonna like me and knowing my girl too like she don't like when i sit on music at all because she's like you're a career musician right i say yes ma'am yes you're right <laughs> <laughs> like you one of those things like she's like there's no point in sitting on it because i'm gonna have another experience in six months mm -hmm. that's going to probably be bigger or better or I can tell the story better than this story mm -hmm. you know what I mean so I was like cool let me put this project out let me keep going but yeah man I put them projects out but in the beginning I was yeah. just devastated on it was kind of like the plan the plans dog the plans 
The plan was so immaculate. It was so beautiful. <laughs> we were about to get back to it, but wow. yeah. Did you find new ways to promote during the pandemic? Yeah, I found new ways. I found the live shows, online streaming. I got my Twitch up. Ooh. I got my um, what's it called? Uh, my email list. My text message list. Oh, yeah, those number things are so cool. Yeah, man. Like, you, people can text me, call me. I send birthday songs to people. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, it, it became, I would actually build that one-on-one -on -one experience with a lot of fans, a mm -hmm. lot of supporters. You know what I mean? So, it helped. Like, an artist like me, it's, it's crazy to say, an artist like me, without knowing it, you know, through the wreckage, right? Is the is a blessing right there, right? Mm. So through all this crazy shit through pandemic, it stopped me. Mm. What it needed, that's what I needed. I needed something to actually stop me, to where I'm gonna drop music anyway. It's not like my buzzing is gonna go down. There's no way. It's social media. You just stay social. Yeah. That's it. Just keep going. Just keep staying social, and even through you know, keep dropping music, keep interacting interact that's it you know it's it's, it's gonna be cool yeah. but it stopped me from touring stopped me from doing all of that is where i can focus on my foundation a couple other businesses you know get certain things together like it was needed mm -hmm. so the pandemic it, it's crazy where it became another it became a blessing Yes. became a big blessing in many ways and now you know i see a lot of homies that you know got their own printing got the own spot got the storefront is coming wow. you know what i mean like buying equipment to be more uh independent independent artist that's what i did you know what i mean yeah. like that's what happens you know shout out to the young government out here you know dropping them young baby stimmies <laughs> you know i don't know joe byron you know on donald hump out here they out here doing what america does Getting them, dropping them stimmies, you know. I tell you this, my daddy never gave me fourteen hundred dollars, <laughs> six hundred dollars. You know, it's it's a little different. You know, I tell people it's a lot of perspectives. You know, I I can't I ain't complaining. You know, y'all wild. You know, they politicians. They wild. You know, y'all think rappers wild? No, the politicians out here. They rock stars. Wow. They rock stars out here. What was your favorite project you dropped out of 2020? Ooh, man, favorite. <sighs> Say fun, the most fun doing, the most fun one was Orgamania. Okay, of course. Yes. Orgamania was just fun. Like, the voiceover shit, I'm laying in the bed doing that on my phone. <laughs> and I send it to the homies to to mix it and master it. He said, dang, no. I was like, bro, I'm just high, laying down on my bed, just watching talk wrestling, talking to myself and all these voices. <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? You know, like, I'm in a room doing this, and Lisa just looking at me like, all right? You know what I'm talking about? You know? Or, or it's me chanting in the background. Like, all the, all the shit you hear is me doing by myself wow. in the room. That's it. <laughs> laying down. Like a little panda chewing on bamboo <laughs> with the, <laughs> with the phone, and that was fun. That was like f so fun. That was just fun. Uh, the other two was very deep. Like oh, it made me reopen wounds that usually I wouldn't reopen, mm -hmm. and go look at it in a different perspective and tell another side of the story, tell another story that I see now. So those are, I love doing them, but they are painful. Mm. Because, you know, I'm I'm I want to give you something that you could feel like you know even if it's happy, sad, passionate, it got to be somewhere you know, I gotta cry at least on two or four of the songs writing, cause it made me open up these these doors that usually I don't open, wow. and that's like my thing with albums, like it's it comes from experience, like yeah, all experience or you know it has to be all for me. It got to be experience like from. maturing. I mean, like yeah, you, know, you wouldn't have done this five years ago even. Yeah, same thing. Like okay. since since day one, this is how I go True. approach albums since day one. The love is it the love is darkness album. Is that uh, beautiful darkness. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that was same thing. We approached at the same. Like my albums is me transcending. So beautiful darkness is me 
want to be beautiful, but I'm caught up in this darkness, mm-hmm. right? Then, like Granny said, is all this wisdom my granny blessed me with, and I took her um, her her voicemails and put it in the album. So through the album, you get to hear these personal voicemail that she hit me with all the time, and some of them are hilarious. <laughs> Like random calling me about fat burner pills. Yeah. Like, boy. So Jamie, I got these fat burners and can't remember the lady's name who she was telling her about it. Just what a grandma does, you know what I mean? Or sing me happy birthday. Right. Like she been singing me happy birthday no matter where I'm at. Like call me, tell me to hang up so she can leave a voicemail. Mm. So it's kinda like I gave people a inside of like why I am the way I am. I've been having this love. The next album was The Love Is Never Hidden. Mm. So now I'll show you my what my granny said. Then from what my granny said, I learned that the love was never hidden. The love always been in front of me. I was just looking for it at the wrong place. So it was like I always go in, like, kind of, they all kind of attach. Right. You know, like, I think my next album going to be called Grandson. Okay. Like, and that's going to be a continuation of Granny Said. Mm. You know, and that's like... You know, and that's grand S U N. You know what I mean? So now I now I get to talk about my grandmother. I never get the first time me talking about her in the past. Like she passed away. Yeah, you know what I mean? Cause when Granny was here, Granny said I had to drop that album because I'd be one of the fakest grandsons to drop this album when she left. Because she don't roll like that. She want her flowers now. Yeah. Right now. She want her cut now. She wants her flowers now. She want her percentages of the T-shirts, <laughs> of her sayings and her quotes. She want her piece of the pie. And that's why I did it while she's here, so she can actually get a piece of it. Like, like even if I'm giving her money, she knows, you know, I'm giving her money from her cut. Mm. You know, like, oh, granny, here you go. And like, you know, that go where you celebrate a shirt isn't selling nice. The granny said the album is did good. Sure, it got top Merz gave it his top eight, top ten album with number eight wow. in 2018. And it got on all these lists, and all these praise. She said, hmm, I did your album good, huh? <laughs> I'm like, you know, she's like, we're going to see how the next one does. I said, damn, damn, Granny, you wow. real, 100, 100. But, yeah, I have to dig deep, man. I have to dig deep. It's no point in creating music if I'm not digging deep. I have fun, but. I have to have the balance. You got to have that, that, those projects. Like, you know, when everyone go, once you blow up the way you want to blow up and everyone goes back, they be like, damn. Right. The album that I heard from him, that's probably not even his best album. Mm-hmm. They're like Mac Miller. Like, you know, like, damn. People go back and be like, oh, man, he has some fucking cuts. Like, oh, yeah. He has some shit. You know what I mean? So, got to dig deep, man. I think Dirty Gospel is like, my favorite one. Oh, Dirty Gospel, man. That was Very deep, deep too, deep. man. Forgiveness that, is probably like one of my favorite songs. Yeah, ever. that was actually a fun one, man. I didn't have to dig deep into a lot of that because it was a continuation of Love and Never Hidden. Mm. So Dirty Gospel was like my uh, me going out like, yo, this is the end of this chapter. I found forgiveness in my mom. Mm. So you would never hear music of me telling the telling the story of how much you hurt me. Wow. Now you're going to hear the stories of how much you, I, I lift her up. Right. So I, I'm, Dirty Gospel is me closing a lot of chapters. And if you could tell on Love is Never Hidden, the flowers are growing from me. Mm-hmm. So I'm mm-hmm. the dirt. So that's what Dirty Gospel is. like. I'm the So in Love is Never Hidden, I got the flowers growing out of me because I'm the dirt. I'm the like the the soil, so dirty gospel is a, you see the flowers growing from the uh, the the letters and stuff like that. So it was really like letting people like I'm the soil. I'm I'm cool with my dirt. There's nothing wrong being in from the mud. Like everything grows mm. from this. Like everything got to pass through dirt. You know what I mean? You need the essentials of water and sunlight, but you know, you got, but you got to have the soil. So let me, this was like a whole, I kind of tied the knot on the album, like, cool, this is done. Yeah, this year, probably just dropping singles. 
mm-hmm. like more singles. Tell me about the Inland Empire. I don't understand how these regions I are set eat. up. Like, tell me how California's regions are even set up. I don't understand. It's first, yeah, first of all, I'm born in Queens. so me, Is that I, Queens, New York? Or yeah, okay. Queens, New York. So, it's like, I I came to IE around 2000 and... Three, two or three. Okay. You know what I mean? And How old were you? 16? I'm trying to remember, man. It was a while. Cause I was in and out from Pasadena and Queens because that's where my grandmother lived. Okay. So I was kind of the familiar. I know I was more familiar with Pasadena, L.A. You know, I was more familiar than when I came to IE. I was like, all right, this is San Bernardino County. This is a whole different area of California that some people don't really even know about. This is where Big Bear is at. This mm-hmm. is where Mammoth is at. This is, you go further, this is where they do Coachella. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is, um, I say the Native Americans run Inland Empire. When people say who run it, I say the Native Americans. Okay. They own every, they, 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 as they should. You know what I mean? So we got San Bernardino, you got Riverside, you got Ran- you the Rancho Cucamonga, uh, yeah, watch uh, Friday After Next. I have not. Oh, yeah, you got to watch Friday After Next. So you hear Rancho, Rancho Cucamonga. Like, you got these different places. You got Pomona, but Pomona, a lot of people, some people consider Pomona a IE. Okay. But some people com- consider Pomona LA. I call it the gateway. Okay. It's in between. Cause it's not a nine area code, but it's LA County. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's it's a... It's how else do I explain IE? I even when I went on tour, I like it's really the, uh, a heartland, bro. You got from rural land to city, you got from snow to desert in California, yeah, bro. Like all in one county, all in one county, wow. And like everything from from million dollar homes where Crooked Eye and J Lo lives in Paris, mm-hmm. California. It's a Paris, California. Yeah, it's a Paris, California, where J Lo got a house. Of course she did. Crooked Eye or Kendrick Lamar family got a house in East Val. Okay. That's in Inland Empire. Like we got all these big million dollar wine country horses. Like you, you get to have land because we got space. Right. You know what I mean? Then you get like San Bernardino, where it is your mix. Like any type of city, where one part is really bad, one part is really good. The parts is bad and good. There's like you know, so it's. It's real, but I think it's because it's open. Okay. Right? It's real open, but it don't have nothing like the city. Like, if, as a mu- musician, you can create your own there, but to uh, make it out, you're going to have to venture out. You have to. Does venturing out count as going to L.A.? Or is it going really- to L.A., going to San Diego, going to... <clears throat> Me was going out of state. Because okay. I can go I can go four hours the other way, and I can be in Arizona. You know what I mean? Or I can go four hours the other way, and I can uh, up to fifteen. I'm in Vegas. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, like it was. I had to go everywhere, so I would be in L.A. a lot. I would go to Vegas a lot. I would go to Arizona a lot, San Diego a lot. You have to go out. You got to go out where the resources at. Mm-hmm. Then, like, or or what I even did do? I did that. And you got to create your own resources. You know, it's one of those places like. Places I've been like Missoula, Montana. You heard of Missoula? Yeah, I've been there. So Missoula was pretty lit. To me, Missoula was lit, bruh. Uh, I did band, and I went on a band trip there to Man. perform. The Grizz, the Go Grizz, or whatever that school is called. Oh, right? see, hey, Missoula, <laughs> bruh, listen, all the weed, <laughs> all the music, it was tight. Yeah. It reminded me of IE because it looked small, but it was big. but And it had big town vibes at moments. Not all the time, but at moments. And that's, to me, what the IE is. This is the same thing. Like, we got band. Like, Alien and Farm is where you're from. Uh, Travis Barker is from Fontana. Hit Boy's from Fontana. Audio Hit Pub. Boy's yeah. crazy. You know what I mean? He's yeah. from Fontana. He's from IE. That's why you hear Nas hit up Hit Boy. Like, how's the IE weather? In right. the, yeah, on the Nas albums. People are like, oh. So now, yeah. lately, lately, we've been getting a little shine. You know, we get uh, we getting shine. We getting people making lists of the top fifteen artists out of the IE and mm-hmm. all of this. And now you getting all like, and I can say I'm proud of the youngsters where we from. 
You know what I mean? And as an OG, I'm like telling my older old cat because they want to be on the list. They want to be on that. Like, nah, this is not for us. Mm-hmm. We're 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 OGs, bro. Like we're doing we we like our time for that list is gone. We need other lists. Wow. <laughs> we need bigger lists. We need to be on these bigger lists. But that list isn't for us. Mm-hmm. This is for the up and coming cats that putting in this work or they really solely just internet or they the new kid or you know and light is being shine where we're from and i love that right now like all type of light like it's and eventually like when like there's a big festival going on in ie but there's no ie artists on it but that should be like that in la sometimes man like is that frustrating though or Hell yeah. Like for anywhere. Like it's like people be like, you know, there's there's LA there's LA artists, but they don't play a lot of L now they're trying to play a lot of LA music on LA radio. I see, I see. I see. You know what I mean? But the radio in LA is like every major radio station. They gotta play everybody's music. Yeah, we get that in Seattle. Same thing, you know what I mean? So it's it's the same it's 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 just the name of the game. I don't even get, like, of course I get frustrated, but nothing you can do about it but create your own or create them noise or buy on. Mm-hmm. There's all of these things you can do. If you if you really upset, you not on there, figure out. I, I, I wanted to be on paid dues, right? So I campaigned to get on paid dues. I never get on paid dues uh, t- two times in a row with all these artists performing well. Open on stage was Kendrick and Mac and right. you like you know what I mean like shit like that because I wanted it. Mm-hmm. So if you really want it and it's not going, you got the you got to go put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. You know you're gonna look foolish from people who don't chase their dreams. That's cool, but just know that you are gonna feel that people who don't understand gonna think you. People thought I was begging to get on paid dues because I'm campaigning. He like you begging to get it on. I said no. I'm asking the people to show paid dues why I belong on the stage. Now, if you think that's begging, <laughs> you you about to have a rough life. It's promoting. Yeah. <laughs> you, but I know rappers that would just rap me like I don't do that promotion shit. I go. Well, look at them. Where are they? <laughs> <sighs> it's funny. One of the homies hit me up about that. I'm like, bro, I said, bro, I told you. It's gotta be. It. Full circle. Full everything. circle. Yeah. There's not. This is actually the music business. The music got nothing. To, the music got nothing to do with the business. Right. 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 Till you have to put it out. Mm-hmm. Then it become. Then it merges. Especially if you want to be someone who's independent. Yeah. You know, everyone wants to be independent right now. Yeah. But. Yeah. Because it's where it's at. Like right. you know, I wouldn't turn down a, a major deal if it was right for me. If I got what I want, you know what I mean. Like if I got. Even 75% of what I want, because I know what I'm going to make on the backhand. You know what I mean? Like, some people are scared to even do that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you don't have to sign your life away. You can do a one-album deal. But you've been around for so long, you, you'd be carrying your fans along with you. Yeah. Versus someone who's t- putting all their money into someone who doesn't even really have a fan base. <sighs> sure, that's what they want. They don't want me. Uh-huh. Sometimes they want someone that, that want a 360. Cause they just want to fuck them over, though. Yeah, they, 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 that's the, and, and it's hard to say even fuck over, man. Cause even people look at it like say Meg the Stallion deal, and they be like, damn, she got a bad deal. But man, like you know how much it costs to put a artist on to make an Stallion status mm. from where she started to where she at now. That's millions of dollars that you won't see until five years later in her career. Mm-hmm. Like, you might see a little bit now, but it's, I get it. Once you be in this business, you kind of understand. Like, you know, you say you want to create a label. And you go like, damn, you know, I got this female artist. And I got to make sure she on top. So, she, she got to have a budget for her wigs, makeup, wardrobe. She got to be comfortable because she's a woman. First, like, make a six-foot woman. So, it's even different now. You know what I mean? So, all these things you come to play to, you're like, dang. I'm gonna pour a lot of money into this. I gotta get mine's back. True. It's a good right. way to do it. Like there, I don't understand labels who do it in a sneaky way, where you know someone go back and read the contract and they find something like, "Whoa, what's that?" Right. You know, I've seen people do two page contracts mm-hmm. for millions of dollars. Wow. It's simple. It's a simple contract. Simple. Not trying to use the language. 
maybe you need like a blue light. And it's like, oh. there's, there's some hidden things. Some national too. treasure, Nicholas <laughs> yeah. Cage. Blow smoke on it and <laughs> there it is. Cry on it. <laughs> <laughs> Alakazam. You know, all appear in the all seeing eye appears and boom. Right there it says, I get your third born. <laughs> And not your third born to get your foot. Oh <laughs> get your foot. I would think the regulator will be on sometimes. <laughs> I'm mean, gonna get your first born and your third, your back wisdom tooth and your front tooth and your earlobe. That's what we want. <laughs> we about, like, about to make another you. <laughs> we about to clone you and put you in the jail. And you gonna come back and you are gonna be like Gucci Mane. That's oh, what we gosh. gonna do. We gonna clone you. I'm dead. But yeah, you know, people with these clones, you know. I'm trying to lose weight. I can't wait till I be called a clone. <laughs> no, it's different, man. I don't know who that is. His head is so big on that little body. What happened? <laughs> oh, I can't wait till they think I'm a goddamn clone. Tell me about your podcast you had. Uh, orchestrated bring, yeah, bring it back. Orchestrated, yeah. Is it, right now, it's a brick to your face with Noah and Lisa. Okay. So we're bringing that back. Yeah, go. getting back. You know, it doesn't mean Lisa conversating about life, music, advice, family, working relationship, partnership. Just, you know, you get to hear the queen perspective, you know. Wow. She the boss lady, so you get to hear her side. Well, all right, cool. You know, you get to see the dynamic, how to work with your partner. We give that advice because people are like, how do you work together? I'm like, man, that's. And uh, patience, understanding, communication, marijuana. Hell yeah. That's it. Well, Noah James, what's some advice that you have for up-and-coming artists, Woo! creators, influencers? Everything you want to do, research it. Hmm. Research it, man. Research it. Like, just research it. That's it. You know, you can take the leap. I'm a leaper, <laughs> right? I will leap first and try to build the plane on the way down. It works for me. But now older I get, we more research we do, we don't have to do all that. The build the plane is built. But in the beginning, you might have to jump off that cliff and build the plane on the way down. But <laughs> do as much research as you can. Yes. You know what I mean? Use your nine to five as a funnel to put into your career. Um go broke for investments. Mm. If it's if it's gonna make you money back. Go do, do it. If it's going to, if you, because once you do it, you're going to want to get that money back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you're going like that, you know, those little simple things I would have done, you know, like, you know, I would have tell homie Vive, like, my de my detachment of cash is gone. So everything's about credit, hmm. getting your credit up. Artists, if you can get your credit score up, and an LLC get, too. You know, get your <laughs> LLC and your credit score for real artists. I'm telling, listen. Listen to someone that is is getting it now. Like, you know, and it's cool that I get it now because now I make enough money to where like cool. I it's, it's gonna really I don't have to worry about starting businesses. I have all these businesses so I can create my LLCs and different LLCs and eventually do my S Corp and do all that shit, you know what I mean? Huh. But I can get your credit, figure out how to get your credit. And get your LLC for yourself. That's it. Wow. And if you get it right now, what, Lisa, you don't got to pay for the LLC? What is it right now? For the taxes? Yeah, you don't have to pay the eight. Uh, this, is, this is in California oh, right now. Damn it. Yeah, you don't have to pay the, uh, I think, state tax for like two years or some shit. Wow. Yeah. COVID. There we go. COVID. COVID. <laughs> what is the easiest way for people to reach you? NoahJames.net. Or Noah underscore James. And it's N-O-A. N-O-A, man. N-O-A. In Hebrew, without the H, it means movement. There we go. So N-O-A is, is got to move, baby. N-O-A-J-A-M-E-S. Noah James on that. You know, pot life. Hashtag pot life, work of life. You'll find me. There we go. Yeah. This is the NAS podcast with? Young Orca. Can you make an orca noise? <laughs>